As any, any body that serves with expectation, there shall be a delivery of that which he, he or she is expecting. All things are ready. Healing is present here this morning. Salvation will take place. Sanctification will take place. Regeneration will take place. And gracing will take place. There will be outpouring of your spirit. There shall be spirit or revival in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Please put your hand together as you take your seat. April, time of refreshing. Praise the Lord. This is the theme before us, particularly in the month of April and all through this quarter. That theme shall be resonating. It shall be coming up on and off. Because it's going to be a time of revival. Refreshing the theme of the month was taken from the book of Acts, chapter 3, 19 to 22. Let me explain what it means, what uh, refreshing means quickly. Say, a time of refreshing will come from above. Praise the Lord. Refreshing, another word, means revival. And during the all night meeting, during the, time, the night of praise and liberty, I explain what revival means or restoration means. Refreshing means revival, means restoration, means restitution. And I try to explain them. I had explained restoration to be a return of everything you lost as exact. Restitution is, makes you to get more. Restitution will not come to you just the number you lost. According to scripture, Zacchaeus said, if I have taken anything by force, I will return them for whole. So I pray for you in this season that whatever opportunity you have lost in life, they shall return to you in many folds. They shall return to you in many folds. Because the actual Greek word of refreshing is restitution. A time of restitution shall come. When God will make all things available. And another term for it is restoration. Restoration is getting exact. Like Dave, he said, go, pursue them, recover all, no less. So there's nothing you have lost in life, no opportunity that you have lost, that in this time of restoration, that you will not get them back. But we are going to get much more, because when a thief is caught, he'll be made to return whatever he stole in sevenfold. That is a form of restoration. There will be multiple opportunity, manifold restoration for somebody here in this season in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And for restoration, I explain it in three ways. Restoration of the power of Christ. First of all, restoration of the power of Christ. The power that raised, the power that quickened the dead. Say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Bring deliverance. To open blind eyes. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. There were 16 listed in Luke 4, 18 to 21 there. Three of them start with declaration of the word. Preach means to declare the word. You can see that restoration is rooted in the word. And the power of Christ to break the burden of poverty, to terminate sickness, to usher in favor, is the power of Christ that you'll be experiencing. Then the authority of Christ, the authority of Christ, he has anointed you. The authority of Christ is, will be operating in everyone's life. The authority of Christ, praise the Lord, and restoration of character. Amen. Restoration of character. That's where they almost took me to this morning in the course of the Bible, class, Bible training class. The fruits of the Spirit are these. Meekness, joy, peace, loving kindness, long-suffering, and all those things. So when we talk about restoration, you expect restoration of the power of Christ, of the authority of Christ, and the character of Christ. So that we are not only being blessed, Physically, materially, we also have the character of Jesus exhibited in us through the fruit of the Spirit. That is summary of where we have come thus far. Praise the Lord. 
But this morning, I just want to make a, a few comments. Revival, refreshing, and prosperity are connected. Amen. Or let me say refreshing and prosperity. Or revival and prosperity are interrelated. They are connected. One will lead to another. The church cannot expect prosperity without a, without a refreshing from above. So a season of refreshing as declared is a time of revival that leads to prosperity. For restoration, there must be a revival. Praise the Lord. And I would like you to know this for restoration in the body of Christ, for restoration for an individual Christian, for restoration for a church, there must be a revival first, what is called refreshing. From above, you prosper to the degree of your spiritual prosperity. And this has been the principle of God. Anytime Israel was in apostasy, they were in rebell rebellion. Anytime they were not in good time with God, anytime they fall short, God punishes them in suffering that comes upon them. Is suffering that will come upon them. And he will always tell them that if they will repent, praise the Lord, if they will repent, if they will repent, then he will visit them again. And prosperity will begin to speak in their life one more time. Quickly turn your Bible to the book of, of Joel, chapter 2, verse 21 to 28. Joel chapter 2, 21 to 28. Joel 2, 21 to 28. Praise the Lord. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Surely the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field. For the patches of the wilderness do spring. For the tree bearing her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat. And the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you, I would like you to know that. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. And I would like you to know that. Let me read another translation. I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten. Are you hearing that? I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten, the great locusts and the young locusts, the other locusts and the locust swarm, my great army that I send. The Lord says, I will give you back what you lost to the stripping locusts. Everything is about losses and restoration. And then, see the consequences of it. And you shall eat in plenty. Amen. Is somebody following the reading? And you shall do what? And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Once again, you will have all the food you want. You will praise the Lord your God who does this mi those miracles for you? Never again will my people be disgraced like this. If somebody came to the season of refreshing, and you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. For the 
for the purpose of Ephesus. He's repeating it and in verse 8, and it shall come to pass afterward that I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the serpents and upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars, the sun, and, and so on and so on. Let me stop at verse 28. Let me comment on this very, very quickly. I'm trying to establish how revival and prosperity are related. Revival and prosperity are related. By the design and the principle of God, Revival is a prelude, is a necessary pre step to prosperity. And any child of God who wants a prosperous life must be a child of God that desires the outpouring of his spirit. He said, I will repay you at the end of it so that his spirit is poured upon you. I don't know of now, but, sir, I can tell clearly. I don't mean unbelievers, because every kingdom has its own rule. And you must play according to the rule for you to have your reward. Every kingdom. The kingdom of Christ is not only the kingdom on the earth. There's also the kingdom of darkness. But the kingdom of Christ is superior to the kingdom of darkness. And it has its rule. And one of the rules is that, look, the more, the more prosper, spiritually prosperous you are, the more material prosperity you attract. See, I will pour my spirit upon your sons and your daughters. I will pour my spirit upon old men. They will see vision. There is something seem to be missing in the church today that is of a concern. And that is why I believe strongly in my opinion that that's why young Christians now are not making headway spiritually. Someone who has crossed certain age will no longer even desire the things of God, the anointing of God. He will not even desire. He will not even desire the things of God. They don't even desire spiritual gifts. But how many of us again will lock ourselves in, take time out, and fervently desire in the night, Lord, pour your spirit upon me. The spirit of visions, the spirit of revelation, the gift of vision, the gift of revelation, so that I'll be a useful instrument. How many of us? He said we should not be afraid. I'm going to bring about a restoration as a result of your repentance. Because if you look at verse 16, he said, Gather the people, sanctify the, the congregation, assemble the elders. Gather the children and those that suck the breast, let the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber and the bride out of the closet. Let the priest and the minister weep before the Lord. Meaning, let there be repentance. Let there be a change of mind. Let there be a refocus on God. Let there be a concentration of God. Let there be a pain of attention. Let there be a premium place on their relationship with God. And when this one has been done, he told them, you don't have any fear. You don't have any reason to fear. Ye learn, be glad, and rejoice, because the Lord will do great things. And I pray this morning that God will do great things in our midst, that the Lord will do great things in your life, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Even to the children. To the children. One year, two years, and as parents, 
we must enroll our children into deep spiritual work with God. Because they are a chance to visitation from above. Refreshing when it start, it will not eliminate, it will not discriminate against anyone. He said, you children of Zion, you sons and daughters of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain, moderately, and he will cause to come down to you the rain, the former and the latter rain. When, 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 when we expect revival and refreshing, in the time of revival, in the time of refreshing, you begin to see the reign of God. And reigns in the Bible means blessing. So instead of pursuing material things, and I do say frequently that money is not what is blessing. Not even the cars and the houses, but those are elements, those are ingredients of blessing. But blessing is more than. But you cannot be blessed and you not have all those things. But when you leave the substance of blessing to pursue material things, that's why we call arm robbers and thieves today as blessed. Oh, God has blessed this man who, because he has just bought a limousine. He built a mansion. You do not know whether he is a rich or money. Say, ah, God do bless him. Oh, God do bless him. God, God has blessed him. Bless this person. That is not blessing. But the blessing of God, he make it rich and add no sorrow with it. He said the floor shall be full. Meaning there shall be plenty of food for your body when the time of refreshing come. Silos full of grain when there's a time of refreshing, when there's a time of revival, then he will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten. Locusts can be in the form of sickness. Locusts can be in the form of deprivation. Locals can be a form of items that you have lost. Locals can come in various ways. But the Lord says, He will restore to you years that the locals had eaten. All manner, all various types of locals, the one that came through sickness, the one that came through 419, the one that came that you open shop and nobody is coming, you are marching through this, the street and there seem not to be opportunity, it's a locals. And he said, he will restore them. You shall eat in plenty. This is error of scarcity. Nehemiah 8 verse 10. The Bible says, now go. It's not time to weep. It's not time to cry. Ezra had just spoken to the people of Israel and they were wailing and crying. And Nehemiah came saying, no, no, no. It's no longer time to cry. This day is holy unto the Lord. Go, eat plenty. Eat sweet food. Drink sweet drink. It's no more time to sorrow. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The same is repeated here. That abundance shall be your portion. This season is coming with its abundance. This season is coming with super abundance. He said you eat and remain and give to those who do not have. That is a life of surplus. It comes with refreshing because when they repented, Based on what Ezra described on Nehemiah was telling them, then Nehemiah came to prophesy. So, oh, now that you have that you have embraced restoration, reconnection, reconciliation, now it's time for you to go and enjoy abundance. Go and eat good food, drink sweet drink, have surplus to give those who do not have, and then there's no room for sorrow. Nehemiah 18. Praise the Lord. So that you know, have enough, have enough. Give those who do not have. For this day is holy unto the Lord. Say, depart from my presence here today. Live here to eat the fat. Drink the sweet. Send portion to them who do not have anything prepared for them. There is no room for you to sorrow. There is nothing to be sorry about. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. These are things that come with revival. Refreshing means revival. Anytime you are connected to the move of the Spirit of God, your time of abundance has come. Let me run up quickly. Praise the Lord. Connection between revival and prosperity. My time is up. 
you desire material prosperity, then desire spiritual prosperity. One instruction, one signal, one inspiration can bring result that is more, more, more than your, one, your 20 years of labor. And I pray today, as we are entering the season of revival, you desire revival. You desire closer work with God. You desire to be used of God. You desire greater anointing. You desire to be in his presence. You desire intimacy with him. You desire fellowship with him. And you begin to see the outpouring of his blessing. The Lord bless you and do you good. Kindly help me. Welcome my friend, Professor Ibatu. Praise the Lord. Are you on your feet? Okay, then put those hands together for the Lord. Do it hard, do it hard. It's, um, do it hard, do it hard, do it hard. Clap the hand hard. Do it hard, do it hard, do it hard. Yes, do it again. Do it more. Do it, do it, do it. Okay, God bless you. Please take your seat. Now, one good thing about the standing, sitting, the exercise of your hand that I've just done now will keep you awake and keep you alert, especially in the kind of weather like this. Hallelujah. I want to salute you in the name of the Lord God that we serve. I count it a privilege to be here. Um, just as he said, I'm actually on transit. But then, frankly speaking, I desire strongly to be here. I could have waited tomorrow and then just pass by to the airport. But then, um, then you know that um, your father has become a full orphan. I hope you know. Oh, they don't know. You didn't tell them. He has become a full orphan. No father, no mother again. Hello? So, I've, I've come to commend him to your hand that you should take care of him. Hello, are they here? Hello? So, you should now take care of him, eh? Uh, I actually couldn't um, make the barrier, so I felt strongly I should um, stop over and be part of service, at least to see him. And um, like I told him when I came, I said, okay, this is how they look when they don't have father and mother again, eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. So, God is your strength. Thank you for giving Mama a befitting barrier. For me, I learned that long ago that, you know, the scripture says we should honor our father and mother and what we follow. It will be well with you. One day it dawned on me because before we take barrier very lightly, especially because of the way the unbelievers do barrier. So some of us just feel, no, we will not. But it don't on me that, no. Check your Bible. Joseph gave a very befitting barrier to Jacob. We're not talking of going to borrow to bury. No. Hello? But you shouldn't just throw away. I mean, give a befitting barrier because that is the last honor you can give to the body of your parents. So, and whenever you do it, doors of prosperity opens for you and it becomes well with you. So you've just done what is honorable, sir. And because you did what is honorable, honor shall begin to follow you in a new dimension. Doors shall begin to open for you and for the works of your hand that God's word might be fulfilled in the name of Jesus Christ. So we commend you to the living God who will help you, help you with your younger ones. Every one of them shall no longer be small, but greatness and honor shall follow them. 
you've done this honorably to your parents, your children will do for you. You will not bury your young ones. But in old age, they shall stand and bury you honorably. If Jesus did not come before those days will come, let it be so. Jesus, mighty name, we pray. Okay, then um, I, I thought you were well taught. Yeah, you were praying and he's standing and you are still seated. That's not correct. I'm going to like to pass by. He doesn't stop at him. He spreads. So when you don't take it, it goes. May the Lord help you in Jesus' name. I didn't come to preach. As I told you, what brought me is what I've just done. But because he has asked me also the word of prayers and the blessing. So, I'm happy about the message. I didn't know what we were going to preach. But when the hymn was going on, I was seeing what I want to tell you from the hymn. And as he was preaching, it just became very obvious. So, who is going to take me back to the hymn? Then, take me to the hymn and take me to 3, 4, standard 3, 4, and 5, and we'll be standing to pray. Please, who is taking me back to the hymn? Where is the guy? Please. No, we're not singing. I want us to, you know, we sing, but sometimes we don't analyze. We don't internalize what we sing. Mama, sit down. We're not singing it. But I want us to follow. And that's where my message is coming from. And then uh, we'll stand up to pray. First, first, go to the, the chorus. Yes, take it from the chorus. Okay, look at this. What draw drew my attention is this word. Mercy drops around us are falling. Hello? Mercy drops. In other words, all that is happening around you now, all the blessings that are happening around you now, they actually drops resulting from mercy. But what we actually need is shower. And we need to plead for it. And that brings strongly the Joel chapter 2. Uh, chapter, chapter 2, yes. The, vo the Joel passage that you read. What God has, the intention of God for his people is showers. Showers of blessing. Not mercy drops. Not drops that is as a result of just, just have mercy on them. Out of mercy. So many of us, and in church indeed, we are living on drops out of mercy that are falling. But indeed, the desire of God is showers. Showers. And the writer said, it is this shower that we plead. And this morning, if you understand the word you have received, you see, you were maybe for want of time. But then, that is a prophetic coverage for the next three months. If you understand that passage that has been read, that is a prophetic coverage for your next three months. And if you are next, the three months effectively, it covers for the rest of your life where you can eat plenty. I, I don't want to go back to that Joel. But go and sit at him. But then come to come to my message drop here. Now look at few issues from that. Now stanza 3, 4 and 5 quickly and we'll be done. Look at stanza 3. You see some of us we don't just sing. When we sing we analyze what we sing. That's why sometimes when praises are on, I did it here. When one song has connected me to heaven, I will abandon whoever is singing because sometimes he is just singing. He, he didn't need to sing many songs. That is the practice. But the one that takes me, I, now that one I stay put. I go sing them the way I like. Dance them the way I like. Sometimes my dance no go rhyme with the drumming. But now that one how they sing. I stay there. Because I know I am already on it. Now, so look at this. Look at this. For time's sake. Now, this is an assurance. Are you in three? 
There shall be showers of blessing. Oh boy. Who is saying amen there? Oh, you guys are sleeping here. I said there shall be showers of blessing. There shall be showers of blessing. Send them upon us, O oh Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing. Come and now honor thy word. It's a prayer. Lord, honor thy word. You have given us a word this hour. You have given us a word in this service that we cover now the next three months of our life. We, we will be standing up to pray. And the prayer, oh, is, oh, God, come now, honor thy word. If you go home from here, that is what you should go and spend the rest of time praying. Ah, those who understand spiritual things know that. These days are not just supposed to be for free, for good. It is, is the time to go now. Spend the next hour, spend the next evening crying out and say, Oh God, come, honor thy word. Now, give us standard four and then four. I'll show you. I'll show you. See, me, I stood. And as the song was going on, a message was coming to me. Look at this. Look at this. There shall be showers of blessing. I said, There shall be showers of blessing. Oh, that today they might fall. Oh, God. Let showers of blessing fall. 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 Let there be an end to mercy drops. Let there be an end to mercy drop. But play this thing low, low, play it low. But who is crying? Who is crying already? Lord, uh, let there be an end to mercy drops. Uh, droplet, droplet uh, that are coming my way out of mercy. Yes, yes, uh, yes, you can eat. Uh, yes, you can drink. Uh, but that is just the showers. Uh, that is still not shower. That is still just mercy drop. Uh, yes, uh, yes, 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 you can take care of yourself. Uh, but do you know the purpose and the plan of God? It does, it's not supposed to stop at you. Ah, oh God, oh God, oh God. Do you have the NLT? Do you have the NLT? Who has an NLT Bible here? Calm down, calm down, stop this. Calm down, calm down. Do, who has the NLT? New Living Translation? Okay, give me Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. I want you to see the purpose and the program of God for your life. I wish it is possible to shoot it here. But if you find it, if you find it, read it. Second Corinthians chapter 9, chapter 9, verse 8. Look, yes, yes. Whatever you have now, whatever good is happening to you now, there's more of God's purpose and plan. Now, now this will not show me, this will not bring it out as rich as I want it. Read, sir. And please carefully. I want you to understand the place of shower and as against mercy drops. Yes, yes, and, sir. And God will generously. Did you hear? Now listen. And God will generously provide all you need. Provide all you need. Then you will always have then everything you need. You will always have everything, everything you, you need. need. And plenty left over to share. And with plenty others. left over to share with others. Oh God. I wish this can be typed. Now, but for time's sake, hear it again. This is God's plan for you and I. If only we can key into it. Read it again, sir. And God will generously. And God will not, not conservatively. No. Generously. He will generously. Provide all you need. Provide all you need. Then you will always have then everything you, you need. you will always have all that you need and plenty left and plenty left, left over, over to, to share, share with, with others. others. Who can believe God's word? That is the prophecy. Joel chapter 2. That is the prophecy. This is a season. God will take us to that level where we will always have all that we need. And we could meet all that we need and have plenty left over to share with others. But they come. 
Go back here. Mercy drop. Go back. They come not as mercy drop. They come as showers. But then, stanza five, quickly, so that we can pray now. This is an hour to pray. Look at what stanza five says. Are we there? Hey, there shall be showers of blessing. But then, look at this. If we both trust and obey. Number two, there shall be showers of season of refreshing. If we let God have his way. If you are not going to let God have his way, you will keep having mercy drops. Mercy drops. But not showers. If you will not let God have his way in your life, if you will not let God have his way in your life, you will keep having your shout, uh, mercy drops. Out of mercy, you will live. Out of mercy, you will eat. Out of mercy, you will drink. But then, you will not have experience of what is called showers of blessing. So, we want to pray. And so, we are going to now pray from up. We want to pray to the Lord. You want to say, Lord, have your way in my life. I give my life to you. Lord, have your way. Not what I want, but what you want. I plead with you, Father. Keep that, keep that on. Okay, I know you are interested, but keep that on first. Not me now. Keep the word. Keep this one here. I want us to pray from here up to three, to four, and to three. So what is the prayer here? You want to give thanks. You want to say to the Lord, I thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I ask for showers. Showers of blessing. Showers. Lord, have your way. Lord, I give you. I surrender to you. Who in this house this morning want to say I surrender to the Lord? You want to say I surrender to the Lord? Lord, have your way in my life. Lift up your two hands if you are there. If you want to say, Lord, have your way in my life. I know, Lord, I have tried. I have been struggling but Lord, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Who is praying now? Come on, everyone pray. Pray. Lord, have your way. Five minutes, we are done. Uh, Lord, have your way. Who is pleading with God? Uh, say to the Lord this morning, uh, Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have your way. Have your way. I will trust you. I will trust. I will obey. I will trust, Lord. Uh, I will obey. I will obey you. I plead with you. Uh, forgive me for all disobedience. Uh, who is praying like that? Uh, who is saying to the Lord, uh, forgive me of every act of disobedience. Uh, come on, pray. Come on, come on. Uh, say to the Lord, uh, I, 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 I can't hear you pray. I can't hear you pray. I can't hear you pray. Plead, plead with the Lord. Uh, Lord, have mercy on me. Every disobedience, uh, every form of disobedience, uh, every level, every characteristic of disobedience, uh, I plead with you, have mercy on me. I plead with you, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I will trust her. Uh, I will trust your name. Uh, I will trust your name. Uh, your name is sufficient. Your name, Jesus, uh, is sufficient. Kapa liba ibra kataliga ya. Ebrete etelima ambra atalibre ketekaya ya. Your name is sufficient, Lord. Uh, your name is sufficient. Your name is sufficient. Mapoto shalibra kata. Ah, who is in this house uh, that is repenting? Uh, they have carried you elsewhere. You have followed them elsewhere. Ah. Why will you have to follow them as well? Why will you have to follow them? Ah, now, please turn, turn. Ah, return, return, I plead with you. Trust in the name of the Lord. Ah, the name of Jesus is sufficient. Ah, the name of Jesus is sufficient. Ah, Ampatete Ibra Asa Libra Kaya. Apate Imbrata Salibre Kete. The name of Jesus is sufficient. Ah, Lord, ah, I plead with you for showers of blessing. That's the next prayer point. Ah, that's the next prayer point. Lift up your hand uh, and plead with the Lord. Uh, Father, Lord, give me showers of blessing. Showers, showers, showers. Uh, because your word has said, uh, there shall be showers of blessing. Uh, there shall be showers of blessing. Uh, I pray, I pray. Friend, you need to pray. Three more minutes of prayers. Uh, three more minutes. Uh, plead with the Lord. Ah, uh, uh, my Father. My father, you said there shall be showers of blessing. I put my trust in your word. I put my trust in your word. 
Ambra teterima ambro godo salibra taya abrede salibra ambro koto kopa kasa libre kete la koke palima kuri rebodo salibra kata libre kete la koke palibre morobo libre kete libre kete keya kata ebra kata libre morobo shakata libre kete kaya ebra kata libre morobo salibra kata libre kete ah Give us verse 24 of Joel chapter 2. Now follow the scriptures. Please, brethren, pray. Pray. Okay. In Jesus' name, we pray. I want you to make specific requests. Let's do it like this. Pick your Bible. Go to that Joel chapter 2. Oh, come on. Sir, give us five more minutes to pray. After all, after all, come. Hey, leave the chorus here. Let them use their Bible. Leave the chorus here. And look at that before. Look at that the chorus. Don't mind me. I keep telling you here, there. And you need to be alert and all that. But open your Bible to Joel chapter 2. That's where we want to pray from. From that verse, verse. Now, take it from verse 23. Take it from verse 23 up to that 27. That's where we're praying from. Okay? Now, Okay, are there people in church with our Bible? If you don't, we can help you by going to the projector. Nevertheless, I wish that you can use your own Bible so that you can pray. Pick the verses one by one. But I ask you to come here because look at this. No, the chorus itself. I'm still in the mood of prayers. Look at this. Showers of blessing. Yes, yeah, showers of blessing. We need mercy drops are the one falling around, but for the showers, we plead. You have to plead. Plead means to pray. Hello? All that has spoken in this Joel chapter 2, friends, I tell you the truth. If you are not going to take your time pleading, praying that this thing should be so, the season will come and pass and you have nothing to show for it. But God is faithful to his word. God is faithful. So if you pray, and the best we can do within the limited time we have is to lead you to pray. Are you with me? And simply, you will follow the line, follow the verse of and say, oh God, according to this word I have had from this altar, I plead with you, cause me to be glad. Lord, look at the, you, you, just from 23, follow it your own way. And, and I don't know how to help you more than that. But me too, I want to pray. Lord, in the name of your son Jesus Christ, Give me the former rain and the latter rain. Let them come at their monta. Lord, let my trashy floor be full of wheat. Let my vat be overflow with new wine. Now, you, you see, they talk of wheat. They talk of new wine here because that is that community then, the Agarian community. So you can relate that to your business, to the work that you do. Lord, let your blessing follow. So we don't have all the time. I have the five minutes I asked for. Two minutes have already gone. The remaining three minutes. Follow the scripture and pray. That's what I can do for you. Oh yeah, everybody pray. Pray. Me too, I want to pray. My father. My father. My father. You brought me here to be part of this world today. And I get into it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Cause, oh God, my threshing floor to be filled. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I plead with you. Please pray. If I just pray. Follow it line by line. Spend less than one minute in one verse. Sir. Spend 30 seconds, 20 seconds in one verse and move on. Uh. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, restore to me all the years uh, that locusts of all kind have eaten and have chewed. Uh. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, all the great army, all the devourers, uh, all the things that have happened to me, my Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let it be that from this day, I shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Let me eat in plenty and be satisfied. And I will praise the name of the Lord my God, who deals wondrously with me. Lord, deal wondrously with me. Deal wondrously with your people. In the name of Jesus Christ, every form of shame, every form of reproach, take it away. As it is written, my people shall never be put to shame. Let this word stand true over my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be evident before all that you are my God and you are in the midst, yes, of my family. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
and that you are God and there is no God like you and let it be true let your people never be put to shame thank you everlasting father Jesus mighty name we pray please join me on this altar you know as these words are going mama please join me where are the other pastors if I pastor please join me on the altar here as these words were the, the, the reading and the declaration were going on, it's strongly done on me. We need to speak these same words over our nation. And look at one other additional verse from that place. Verse. Please permit me. Okay, I won't read it. You may misunderstand it now. And um, but we want to plead with the Lord. All kinds of evil beasts that have been ravaging this nation. Hello? All, all kinds of atrocities that have been going on in this land who want to appeal to God. Are you with me now? I want us to, I'm going to ask two of you, please just face this side. We two will face this side. Ah, Pastor and mom, ah, good. Please, this side. And then you, that side. So we are facing the four corner of the nation. We will stretch forth our hand. We want to plead with the Lord. Please permit me to read it. Please don't misunderstand. I'm not talking about north and south here. Are you with me now? But according to the word of the Lord, verse 20 of that scripture, he says, but I will remove far from you the northern army. I will drive him away into a, into a barren and desolate land. Now, what I, I don't want you to misunderstand me is to think that we're talking of northern Nigeria or southern Nigeria. Uh -uh. Here, it was the, the enemies that invaded the land of Israel. They came from the northern part of Israel, from Syria, what is now known as Syria and Turkey. So, the emphasis here is not about north and south, but it is that the enemies that have invaded the nation, whoever they are, but you see, they are manifesting in all kinds of things we talk about, but it's an entity. Just an entity. But manifesting in all forms of terrorism, hunger, pain, lack. Can't you see hunger in the land? Can't you see pain in the land? Can't you see dryness everywhere? You don't see it? Yesterday, that, that open place, everywhere was dry. I was telling the guy who carried me, I said, why is everywhere dry? I see dryness. I don't know. Everywhere is just dry. Things are just not moving. But then there is an... And that is what he said here. Give them verse 20 of Joel chapter 2 so that they can see what I'm saying. He says, but I will remove far from you. And that is the cry. Church has a privilege to cry out to God. When we cry out to God, God hears us. You may not be able to follow, but I plead with you and I receive grace for you to follow. But I will remove far off from thee the northern army. And then to tell you that is an entity, he says, I will drive him away into barrel and desolate land. We want to plead with the Lord. We are facing the four corners of this nation. I want to declare every enemy, every army that has invaded our land. Every force of evil that has invaded our land. In the very way, in the different ways that this force of evil are manifesting. According to the word of the Lord, we drive you far away. Oh God, remove them far away from our land. Come on, let's pray. Just one, just, just ten, ten seconds of prayers. Oh God, Pantalibo Koza Libra Antori Bakaria. Stretch forth your hand to where you are facing. Just stretch forth your hand. And say, Lord, in the name of your son Jesus Christ. Ah, Lord, we have had enough. Arise, O oh Lord, in your mercy. In your mercy. In your mercy. Lord, remove this northern Hamisa. Remove this one that have terrorized us. 
Remove this one that has been provisions. Uh. Remove this one that have caused us pain. Uh. Remove this one that have caused us sorrow. Remove them from our land. Uh. Remove them from our land. From this altar. We cry out to the nations. Uh. We cry out to the four corners of the land. Uh. The four corners of Nigeria. Oh, you know that I mean. Be removed from our mess. Uh. In the name of Jesus. Uh. You know that I mean. Be removed away from our mess. Uh. In the name of Jesus. Uh. Let the land enter into rest. Uh. Come but Jesus name in Jesus name we are praying in Jesus precious name we are praying one prayer point lay on my heart we pray and the floods shall be full of it um, I want you to speak to your business interest let it be full to overflow what, say whatever I lay your hands to do shall prosper, isn't it? You have a business, you have a shop. That is your flaw. Let customer full to overflow. You run school, let the school full to overflow. Any form of business, a contact and opportunities. Let it say the flaw should be full. The essence is that you should have enough to be a giver. That's where God wants to put you to. Lord, speak to your floor. Please speak to your floor. Speak to your floor. Speak to your floor. Let it be full to overflow. Let it be full to overflow. Let it full. Let it, let's go beyond the gate. Let the classroom be full to overflow. Let classroom be full to overflow. Eden life be full to overflow. Let the classroom full to overflow. Let classes speak to many streams. Let the premises be free, all the campuses. Let the church hall be full to overflow with men and women. Let there be overflow. Pray for your own business. Pray for your own business. My concern is the ministry. My concern is the ministry. My concern is the, is the, is the uh, academy. I am praying for my own. Pray for, let it be full to overflow. This, this church shall be full to overflow. From beginning of the hall to the end of the hall will be full to overflow. There are canopies. There shall be canopies. There shall be tents. There shall be branches. Yes, in the Life Mission Academy, wherever your campus is, the classes shall be full to overflow. From KG to the secondary. From KG to the secondary. Shall be full to overflow. Shall be full to overflow. Your customer connection. Your customer patronage, the ask for a patronage, shall be full. People will gather and they'll take their turn. People will gather and they'll take their turn for you to buy you to buy your service, to buy what you are offering them. People will gather and wait for you to overcome. You will not be able to handle them alone. You will not be able to handle them alone. You are your opportunity, your opportunity, your connection, your opportunity, your connection, your opportunity. Let it be many. Let it be multiple. Let people desire what you do. Let them queue up. Let them lie. Because your flow shall overflow. In the name of Jesus, we are praying. In Jesus precious name we have prayed in jesus precious name we have prayed please join your hands together with me all the pastors and entire church be connected to one another this our teaching about revival during the night meeting but i had no a little idea if revival will arise praise the lord so it's already a time of revival is a revival has begun and this revival will show in our material lives 
revolver ha, is not expected to start in the spirit and end in the spirit. Every revolver ends in the physical. You see, God's idea is that you should have enough, a surplus. And the man said that so that you have enough to give those who didn't have. Isn't it? That you have so that you give those who didn't have. Joel said that surplus, overflow. We pray this morning in unison. We pray in agreement. As a church, we usher ourselves to a time of refreshing. We step into a time of refreshing. A time of refreshing that come from above. Refreshing that come from above. Revival that come from above. That shall bring restitution. That bring restoration. That brings restitution. That bring restoration. In the mighty name of Jesus. This time of revival, the beast, the northern beast, every angle of your life that the enemy used to penetrate, to devastate you, to reduce you, we turn them backward. In the name of Jesus, we turn them backward from your family, from your life, from your business, from your career, from the church, and from this nation. It's a time of revival. We can feel it. I can feel it. It's a time of refreshing. It's a time of refreshing. I perceive the Lord say to me, if as a church body, you mind the word I've spoken this day, and you put to heart to walk with it. I repeat, if you mind the word I spoken this day, and you put to heart to observe it, then I will take shame away from you. I will take shame from you. I will make you an ensign. I will make you a proof of my faithfulness. You will be a talk of the town. If you put in mind the word I have spoken this day, bear it in mind, then I will bring it on around. You have an institution. You have an institution. By the Spirit of the Lord. Father, we thank you. We will take to heart. We take to heart, O oh God. Oh God, lika lika zintegi boboya, rapa lika santa gababa, lika son togo boboya, leba lika zina, rapa lika son togo bobo lika sanda, yeba lika zinta gababa, lika son gababa. For shame, for shame, I bring honor. Yes, rapa lika zin for the shame, I bring honor. I bring honor. I'll bring honor. You have stayed here too long. And you have endured this. Now I will visit you. Now I will visit you. Now I will visit you. I wanted to prove you. And I have done it. But now I will visit you. Your time of refreshing has come. Can somebody appreciate God? Ma 
the caution tagaba. Say he want to prove you, and he has done. La balike send yet want to prove, and he has done. And now the time of refreshing has come. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing. Send from the Savior above. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessings we need. tops round us are falling. But for the showers we plead. In Jesus' name. Lord, thank you. Because you put an end to, oh, I was able to eat yesterday. It's a testimony to some people, but that's, that will no longer be our testimony. Thank you for the time of refreshing. The time of super abundance. We appreciate you. We agree as a church that we mind the word we have spoken. We we'll walk with it. We we'll bear it in mind. And we expect the abundance. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Praise the Lord. Please, can you take your seat? Amen. Well, that is how revival starts. Not, not the way you anticipate. It may not be a revival meeting call. We didn't call for a revival meeting today. But that's how revival starts. And when God is doing great things, he does it suddenly. Always suddenly, unexpectedly. Indeed, we have received a visitation from above this morning. On plan for. He has prepared and packaged it for us because it is our time. We appreciate him. In Jesus' precious name, praise the Lord. Let's give offering.